Do you like Vanguard's target retirement funds? And would you recommend them to most investors for their tax advantage accounts? Well, uh, take the easy part. If you want a target date retirement fund, I would lean strongly in favor of Vanguard's. Why? Because our costs are a fraction, you knew this was coming, a fraction of what the others are charging. Uh, it's a curious paradox. Well, I do not, I, I, I believe, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, I believe 40% in equity, in, in equity of 40%, to have 40% of the equity position outside the U.S. is not the right thing to do. And to do it, I mean, I, I think if you like, if you're that sure that non-U.S. will do better than the U.S., um, you know, give people a choice. Say we're going to start a whole series of international target date funds. God knows we've got enough funds already. And, Another 15 or 20 of them won't, won't matter, uh, 12 of them, I guess. Uh, and uh, you, you, do, you decide, instead of just saying, here's what we're doing, in a notice that nobody read, because people don't read notices. Uh, that said, all the other, we are not particularly out of line compared to the other target date funds. Uh, T. Rowe Price, American Funds, I guess, are the next two competitors. Uh, and... Uh, they have heavy international components. I'm just not sure it's 40%, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. But we're all following pretty much the same strategy. And, and what this makes me reflect on is from the very beginning, I thought the best strategy for investors and for Vanguard, the firm, was to have funds with relative predictability. Uh, so you are never way out of line uh, with your competitors. And you will win on cost uh, if, you, if you really are right in line with your competitors. So if you look at a fund like Windsor and look at other large cap value funds, say, and this is a, maybe not the best example in the world, uh, you're going to find a 99% correlation between our returns. And if you have a 1.5% cost advantage, when you take out lower turnover, lower expense ratio, and no sales load, 1.5% is easy. It's probably too conservative. You'll win by 20% over uh, 10 years, approximately 20% over 10 years. If 20%, doing 20% better than the average fund isn't good enough for you, I don't know how to help you, honestly. Uh, so, and you don't get money pouring in at the top when your performance is great. I mean, just think about Magellan, had Magellan Fund, Fidelity Magellan, had this great performance, the money poured in, it got to $110 billion dollars. Uh, paying the Johnson family a couple of billion a year. Uh, I don't think they need it that badly, but then they do if they're going to cut their prices on their index funds to zero. <laughs> Couldn't resist that. Uh, and uh, then it stopped doing well. And now Magellan Fund is, I think, nine, nine billion about right, Mike? Twelve? Yeah, I was right around ten, so yes. Okay, let's call it ten billion. You could have just said yes. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Mike is such a treasure, i got to say that again. We have such a great time together, and he and I, he takes that in the same, same sense of humor that I offered it out. But uh, that's $100 billion that's left Magellan Fund. Uh, probably more than that, because the market has been going up during this period, even though their performance has been bad. $100 billion worth of disappointed investors. No wonder Fidelity is thinking more about indexing. Uh, and uh, so the idea of being really good must come with the knowledge certain that when you're really good in some periods, you're going to be really bad in others. That's the way of the markets. So that's a terrible strategy uh, because the money comes in, as I said, high. And then when you, when you let the investor down, it goes out, and you've got a dissatisfied investor who's then probably a dissatisfied general public who knows your company. So that has worked out well with index funds. Our other funds have, I've talked about this before, high relative predictability. And uh, so is high, and to, to focus this particular point on, the, on Ed's question, uh, is this relative predictability uh, for our target date funds relative to our competitors who all have heavy international positions? Or is it relative to a simple U.S. stock bond position? 
How are investors going to relate to that? Uh, a lot depends on how international does. International, I should say, non-U.S. And, uh, you know, the fact that I wouldn't do it, wouldn't have done it or wouldn't have done it to such extent, uh, really means nothing because I'm often wrong, if never in doubt. <laughs> Miss that. Uh, and uh, so, and there's also no, no magic in a target date fund. I mean, it all looks so simple, but it isn't. There will be periods when you'd be better off having uh, a very high percentage in bonds when you're starting off and a very high percentage in stocks when you're finishing. I mean, that's just the way the market is. It's, it, you just don't know. I mean, it's so logical and sensible and so smart as a way to think about things. But I think not maybe, uh, I wonder at the end of the trail whether the target date fund won't prove to have been uh, offered kind of as a panacea and in the investment business and the mutual fund business, there are no panaceas. Let me assure you of that. A lifetime of learning. No panaceas.